Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you all how to export videos from DaVinci Resolve. So first we'll start with the quickest option. So you can switch to the cut page, which is second on the bottom from the left. And when you go to the cut page, there's this button up here called quick export in the top right. So if you click on that, you'll be given this little pop up window where all the settings are chosen for you for how you want to export your videos. So you can see here that the resolution just matches the timeline. Same with the frame rate, a pre-selected video codec H.264, I think that exports as an MP4 file, and just everything is the default. So all you would need to do is to click this and then go ahead and hit export. You may also notice that they've added some extra options here. So you can actually use the YouTube tab, which will basically do the same thing, but you can check the box, upload directly to YouTube. Now this is only gonna work if you have authenticated DaVinci Resolve with your YouTube account. So to do that, I will show you later in the video. For right now though, let's jump over to the Deliver tab, which is the furthest right page at the bottom. And here is your main exporting interface. So you can see up here in render settings that you have similar presets to the quick export, but the difference is that you have more settings available so that you can customize your export. So for instance, if you want to change the format from MP4, you can make it a QuickTime.move file by just clicking on the drop-down menu and switching it to QuickTime. Resolution can also be customized here. Frame rate may or may not be, depending on what settings are used for your timeline settings. And by the way, when you're editing your video, if you do want to change those for your default for the timeline, you can go up to File and then Project Settings. And here you can see what settings your timeline is using. So you should customize this before you start editing your video because you can see the timeline frame rate is locked once you start adding clips to your timeline. So once you've gone through and selected your settings, you can hit Add to Render Queue. Now, when you're exporting from your timeline, you have the option to choose to either render your entire timeline, which is everything from the start of your edit to the end. But you can also do it in outrange. So if we click on this render dropdown, in outrange by default is also just going to be your entire video. But if you go somewhere and you hit I to set an endpoint and you click around O to set an out point, that will be the start and finish for the video that gets exported. So if you render with in out range and you have in out point set, it's not going to be rendering your entire timeline, but only what's between the in and out point. So if you want to switch that back to entire timeline, just click on the drop down and choose entire timeline. And now it will once again be exporting the entire video, which is usually what you want. So to actually render, hit add to render queue and your job will pop up here in the render queue. So each job is going to be one video and you can have multiple jobs queued up. So you can select one or all of your jobs and then you will hit render one or render all depending on how many videos you have selected in the bottom right hand corner of the render selection. So if you hit render all, it'll start rendering the video out to a file. It'll let you know when it's done. So when your job is done, it should say completed in number of times. So we can select our job, right click it and then choose reveal and finder. So this should open up the folder where your video file is downloaded. So you can just double click that, play it in any video player you want and you can just make sure that it exported correctly. So now let's talk a little bit more about YouTube export. So if we click on YouTube here, it's kind of similar to the quick export, except that you have more options where you can choose resolution, frame rate, format, same as with a custom export. But then there is this option here, upload directly to YouTube. So if you can't click this and fill in this information, then we're gonna have to authenticate with YouTube. So in order to authenticate, we go to DaVinci Resolve, Preferences, and then go down to internet accounts, click on that, and you need to sign in here. So before you sign in, there should be a, a button here to sign in. You have to log in with a Google account tied to your YouTube channel, and then uh, select your YouTube channel so that it can upload to it. Then you should see something like that. So when you have that done, go ahead and hit save. And now when you go back to the deliver tab, you should see the option to upload directly to YouTube. And when you check this, it will give you title, description, visibility, and category. So for me, I would always set the category to how to in style since this channel is just tutorial videos. Uh, for title, you can call it whatever you want. I'd probably make the file name and the title of the video the same. So what this is going to mean is that uh, after the render is done for your video, it's going to upload directly to YouTube automatically. So the video is going to get uploaded and it's going to have these settings. So if I wanted it to have the video title untitled, before I upload it, I would just type that in here. For description, you can put it in here, but I usually just edit it later on the YouTube channel. And chapters from markers is one of the really nice features. 
So when you have chapters set from the markers, that's going to be setting uh, basically the points in a video that people can jump to. So you, you might see below this video and the play bar that there is the option to jump around to different chapters. So that's what this will do. And how you set up the chapters, if you don't already know, is that you create markers while you're editing your video. So each of these markers in the timeline represents a chapter in the video. If you want to add one, find a point, and a good way of doing that is using snapping and then going to the cut where you enter a new topic, click on the marker button or hit M, and then double click that and rename the marker to whatever you want the chapter to be. So you could just call it chapter five or something like that if you want. And then this will be sequentially listed in the description of the video, which in turn is going to show up in the play bar of the video as a point in time you can jump to that mentions a different topic name. And when you're on the deliver tab, you can also see the markers. You can hover through them and see each of these markers, which are going to end up as chapter names from this chapter at, from markers. Now make sure that your color here matches the color from this drop-down menu. It's going to only export one color to be markers. So I will just use the default blue for that most of the time. And of course, you could also use other markers if you have other needs for them. So if you added a cyan marker, it wouldn't show up in the video chapter description. It would just be a separate marker for anything else you need if you need to make a note in your timeline while you're editing. Okay, so aside from that, uh, I recommend if you're going to upload straight to YouTube, make sure you make it private before you upload it. You don't want a video to be public immediately until you've had the chance to edit the settings back on the YouTube interface. So I would always upload that as private and then set your category. So all the other settings, you'll do that on the YouTube interface. This just gets it onto YouTube as soon as you've had your video exported. And the chapter from markers saves you some time in creating timestamps. So that is basically the gist of exporting your video in DaVinci Resolve. You can either use Quick Export, you can use the Deliver page if you need to customize some settings. We talked about entire timeline versus an out range, and I showed you how to do a export straight to YouTube and using chapters as markers, which is great for adding timestamps to videos on YouTube. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in my future video content.